You're listening to The Angry Designer, where we cut through the industry bull to help frustrated graphic designers survive and thrive. What's up, Angry Designers? Welcome back for part two of our not-so-angry conversation with Alan Peters. It's kind of hard to get angry, um, you know, when you're talking to someone like this, because I mean, his stories are, are they're, they're everywhere and they're so cool. In this second half, we're going to be talking about design. We're going to be talking about his work experience, bad customers, good customers, you know, business versus passion projects. And if you really want to have your socks knocked off. Yeah, I actually said that. <laughs> I don't know why, but we've included a side story at the end of this after our sign off and it will blow you away. It's not so much about design, but it's about such a huge monumentous part in this dude's life that, I mean, it's just, it's worth a listen and you'll be beside yourselves like we were. Anyway, sit back, grab yourself a drink. If you're driving, let's hope it's a coffee or a water or something like that and enjoy part two of our awesome conversation with Alan Peters. It's a good day. <laughs> do you do you do you do you start backwards? Like do you start with hey negative space and then move forward? Like I start with um I, I come up with a list of brand notes like what could this logo be? I have my clients, everybody's gonna be a decision maker when that can happen. Ugh, big big brands, you know, usually yeah. the CEO person or whatever, they Design don't see it until like it's all mm -hmm. finished. Mm -hmm. And then they're like oh, they always have a, 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 some issue. <laughs> um but it, it, with a medium sized brand or smaller, you can usually get this, the president or CEO in that early part, buying off on the subject matter, Agreed. figuring out what the brand nouns are going to, that they're going to define what that brand mark is. And it's, so we make this giant list, like 70 things. And then we hop on the phone or zoom or whatever. Then we narrow it down to 10 to 15. So we get rid of all that stuff they don't want to see. So let's say they don't want to see, uh, I don't know, a Golden Gate Bridge in their logo. Mm -hmm. You know, X that off there, and then, then you're not wasting time doing sketches on stuff that's strategically off, right? Yeah. So then I go back. I've got this list of, you know, 15 things. Like, here's my Legos. And mm -hmm. I have my other list of, what do I, I made it right here. It's like negative space, overlapping geometry, visual rhythm, unexpected twist on an expected visual, visual flow, all the different ways that I can take these things and combine them together to make something new. Cool. So it's not just like another bird logo. Yeah. You know, what if it's a bird combined with a star? Or what if it's a bird combined with stripes? What if it's a bird combined with a talk bubble? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, that's a Twitter logo, isn't it? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but in, in general, you know, like how, and you start, I just, I sit there and I just start drawing, you know, I, 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 I put the brand nouns on a page and I, I have them up in the corner yeah. and I do these stupid little ugly drawings that, that aren't, they are not good drawings, you know, I look at all of them. Dude. These are just, I've, I've got, that's what my desk is filled with. I've got tons and there's like little pencil sketches, you know, you know, where I, and, and they're not detailed. They're, they're fine. So they're, are they they're not, the across, but they're not, they're not for the client. Those are for me, you yeah, know, yes. and, and then, I, then I take those and I make the vectors out of them. Yeah. But that's when I'm trying to figure out like, is, is there a negative space solution? Is there this, is, is there that, but you know, like the, those folks that are on Instagram, that are just like, they they make logos for the sake of logos. They're like, dude, bird. I hate those. I know it's the word bird and it has a negative space. There's a uh, bird and you're just like, uh, duh. Yeah, I hate <laughs> that, dude. Uh, oh, dude, don't even start me yeah. on that. Yeah. So I, I, I'm not I'm not like coming out. Like I've had a client come to me and they're like, wow, I love the negative space logos you did, man. I want a <laughs> negative space logo like that. And, I'm, and I have to tell them, I'm like, maybe it'll work out. Yeah. But that's yeah. it's you know that's yeah. it's I, tough. I, that's like. You know, in Back to the Future, and and you know, and they're gonna drive the DeLorean and not having that sheet of paper that says when the lightning's gonna strike. Like, <laughs> like man, I want to go back and back to my time, but I don't know when the lightning's gonna strike. You know, <laughs> hopefully we get lucky. You know. <laughs> yeah, so okay. So, so with true. that being said, then I mean, again, so you you touched on two points here that I think are interesting. You have a process, right? We've done this enough, yep. right? Um, yep. But then you've got these 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 other people who are just faking logos, right? Where is that fine line with authentic uh, authenticity and um, experience, right? And I, right. and again, I, I okay, I have an answer to this, I think, but I'd like to hear what you have to say when it comes to 
is the stuff like is it authentic when you're doing this over and over and it becomes almost formulaic if that's a real word is that a word yeah yeah formulaic. sounds good yeah all right <laughs> all right okay um authentic authenticity i had that on the list yeah, i know i <laughs> mm. well it, it does become formulaic i think when things become formulaic though uh you get better and you're able to like really start crafting and then mm -hmm. really get into the the th that's when innovation happens i think when you're like all of a sudden you're like you know what i, I remember the first time i did a brand noun process and i was like okay i'm doing this brand noun process thing and i sat down with the client and we came up with 80 things and my client was like this is awesome and i was like this is awesome and then i went back and, and i and i made my and i went and made my logos and i came back i was like here it is based out those 70 brand nouns i picked the six that i like that made sense and I'm like, here you go and she's like well i didn't like those brand nouns i like these <laughs> other brand nouns why didn't you pick those brand nouns and i was like you know what maybe i should have a, a the whole i think the most important part of the brand noun process is when you eliminate the ones that they don't want <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and fair, from fair enough that's good. from then on you know that's the, the you know that's how i did it and it's worked so much better mm -hmm. but you know i, I think you do something over and over and over and over again, and you start seeing the flaws or even the parts that are like slowing you down or aren't working as well. There's definitely part of me where, cause I, I got into this habit of like, like I'm like, I always do, I, I'm like, I want 15 across the plate Damn that I, I feel good about every single one of them That's that I wouldn't awful. be upset about if they pick. Wow. And honestly, man, I don't, I don't need to do that. That's, yeah. yeah I, I keep enough. thinking about it. I'm like, why don't I just do three? I can make a lot more money and do a lot more projects. But uh, I don't know. I, I I don't think you'd hit the. I don't think you'd strike lightning as many times. I don't think you'd be doing as quality of work. I, I think, I think just really. And I have so many people when I when I talk about my process, and I'm like, I present 15 brand marks. They're like, you're dumb. Yeah, yeah. Dumb. That's that's stupid. I'm never gonna do that many. You're gonna confuse the client. Clients are dumb. No. You need you no. need to only present three because your client is not gonna be able to handle it. Mm. And. I'm like, that's not you. true. I think we're right that's not you. true. These exactly. are like a lot of the time. Well, not always, but you know, sometimes you're educating them. But like, if you're working with a big brand, you're working with somebody who's a marketing professional that's worked their way up, who's been doing this for years, who probably has more experience than you do. Agreed. And and they they know what they're looking for. You, you want to check every one of those boxes of what you think they're guessing on, or what they have in the back of their mind, or they want to see. And by doing three, you might miss the target on all three. But mm -hmm. by doing five, eight, 10, 15, you might be like, oh, I've, they haven't seen these five executions. Yeah. They've, they understood the first 10, but the first, right. th those last five, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think you're, I think it's, anyway, yeah, go on. If you can yeah. do 15, yeah, you should. Dude, right? I mean, that's, that's You awesome. know yeah. what the quality level yeah. is. You know what your baseline is for quality. Yeah. 15 is not a bad thing if you can talk them through it. There's usually a, a, a direction or two where you're like, this is, this is what they need to pick, and yep. they usually do. Yeah. They usually can see that. They see they see all the options, and they're like, "Oh wow, that's the obvious choice." You know, it, it's usually that way. It isn't always, but you know, it, being a good salesman is a big part of it. Leading, you know, setting up your deck properly, yeah, well, leading good. to the inevitable choice. Uh, th there's ways to present it where you can you can get in there and you can sell what you want to sell. Hmm. That that uh, fellow, that, that boss I had, EJ, I remember one time we had all done a bunch of logos for, I, I don't even remember what the brand was. I, I think it was Docs or something like that. We were doing a lot of outdoor rec cool. stuff, so like dock, yeah. boat docks. And um, he had done a couple logos. Uh, another designer there had done a couple logos. And I had done a few logos. And we were presenting them all. And I, But I was going to be the one who was going to have to work on and do all the rest of the brand identity and make all the sales folders and whatever else, all the different pieces. Yeah. That we're gonna go with with this logo, and and EJ he he was just like he was he was excited and he wanted he was excited about one of his logos and he was gonna sell it through and he, so he's just he's going about it and he was like such a good salesman he could man it, it, he could have sold a, a hexagon through and there's just like nothing to it it's just a black hexagon he could he could have sold that man and so he's 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 selling the heck out of his logo and he's gonna, he's, he's, he's gonna he's getting we we were on the phone so. The client couldn't see us, you know, it wasn't like Zoom or anything like that back in the day. Yeah, but I remember he looked at me and he was, he was just like, and I was like, yeah, I was like, no, 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 no. no like, no. I don't want to work on them with that logo for the next like six months. And he's months. thinking dollar signs <laughs> and you're like, God, no. <laughs>
Not impact. And he's kind of like, he's kind of like, and I, and I point to the logo I want, completely turned the client and sold my, the, the logo I wanted to sell. And, and he had already had them sold. He, they were eating on his hand. Like he could, we could have like hung up the phone and we'd be done. Yeah. And then he turned it around. He's like, but. Oh. The one you really want is this one. Jedi mind tricked him probably completely. And <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> and he was Brutal. so good. He was so good. But, you know, being a good salesman is a big part of um, selling good work, you know, because mm-hmm. the soft skills are super important. I you know, agree. you can make great logos, but if you're not good at selling them, yeah. you're not, you're just, you're just, you're going to get all well, the, Paul you might Ryan make a lot of great stuff, but it never is going to get produced. Yeah. One of his big things was, you know, you have to own that presentation. Like, it's not just a matter of doing the work, but you've got yep. to present it and, and yep. do, I don't want to say jazz hands, because that kind of mm-hmm. sounds salesy, but, you know, it, it is all in the presentation, the execution. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of times people, they take the easy way out. They will email logos out to people Oof. or they will just like, here you go. Let me know what you think. Um, actually, let me get out of here because I don't want to present too much. But the reality right. is you are absolutely right. It's like that Jedi mind trick where you need to learn how to make people pick the card that you want them to pick. Yeah. Right. And not because you feel it's the best solution, you know, because it looks the coolest, but you've thought this through. And I mean, there's no, there's no question. You've thought this through the execution all the way to the end. Everybody should think this way. Yeah. Here's, here's the, cause the, when you say Jedi mind trick, yeah. that really makes every client who'd ever want to work with me probably think I'm a psychopath. <laughs> that, like, <laughs> that they're not going to work with me. Here, here's, here's the truth. Of it. Okay. So I worked in house yeah. and when I worked in house, I learned that, um, uh, one of the most important things was that I was on the same team as the marketing people and the people I was selling the work to. Mm-hmm. And so if they're like, you know, you should make this change. And I knew that revision was going to just completely sabotage mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. I would tell them that. I'd be like, I'm like, I tried that. It doesn't work. You know, here's why. I can explain it to you. And then you walk them through it. And I, I would always try and lead them the right direction and some, or tell them like, you know, that's probably not the best decision or give them a call on the phone when, when they tried to just email the, the, the revision that was bad. And I would call them right up be like, hey, it's Alan. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the great thing was, you know, not being uh, a vendor because I worked at a lot of sh- all the shops I worked at. I mean, it, if a client told them to do something, they'd be like, mm-hmm, 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 yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, 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 because that they want to get the paycheck. They're worried about, they don't want to piss off the client. Mm-hmm. But I learned when I was working in house that if you were honest and you're guiding a client and you tell them like, you know, that's not the best decision, they're going to respect you more because they know that the end goal is the same end goal that they want. They want to sell that product or they exactly. want to whatever, make that brand, you know, get out there and, and do well. They, they want success for the brand. In the end, it's not about like, me having some award-winning logo mm-hmm. or me being like yeah they picked my favorite one that's yeah. the coolest yeah. or my client you know be like oh, i got the upper hand there <laughs> got my fingerprint on that bad boy it's not about that <laughs> it's what's important in the end is that they're hitting their their goals their sales goals and stuff like that and and that this product is being successful mm-hmm. and if they see like i am willing to lay it down and 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 not, not piss them off, not be a jerk or anything like that. Do it in a respectful way, but I'm willing to tell them, you know, that you're you're steering the car into a ditch right now. Yeah, yep. let's let's get back on the road and let's stay focused. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, you're being their guide, yeah. and, and that's important. And it, there's 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 also like the perspective where you can be like, well, a logo is like a runway model that they shouldn't have to stop on the runway and explain their outfit. Well it's not like that, mm-hmm. especially if you're presenting 15 marks like me, you like, you really need to guide them <laughs> yes. through the process. If, if I try and just like send over a deck with 15 marks, not only they're going to be confused, they're not going to pick the one I want to pick. I know. <laughs> Ever. Dude, are you actually standing in front? Of, okay. So I know my process and I, I've got a, a, a wonky process, you know, where I flash yeah. them on screen. I don't say a word. I take them off and then I, I let them think about it for three, five seconds. And then I'm like, okay, what do you remember? about? I, I've got a weird process. That's um, cool. What do you? What is your like? What is your presentation process in this sense? Because with fifteen, I'd be, mm-hmm. me personally, I talk too much. I'd be there yes. for three hours. <laughs> right. What do you do? So for that first meeting, yeah. uh, that first brand mark meeting, I start with uh, I, I show like the the fifteen brand or brand nouns that they picked. Yeah. I, I review them. I, I 
talk through every single one of them. I mean, these are the ones you pick. This is a subject matter that, that you want to see. You know, I've addressed these 10 of them. You know, this, these other five just, you know, I, I tried some sketches, but they just didn't work out. Yeah. You know, I, I explained that. I'm just like, what you're going to see here is you're going to see 15 marks. I'm going to show you uh, black on white, white on black. I'm not going to show you color because I don't Beautiful. want to influence nice. your decision. Yep, yep here, here. Perfect. Um, I, I want I want to walk through each one and I'm going to have the brand nouns that I used specifically on each one. So if you have to send this PDF off to, PDF off to somebody, they can understand the subject matter really easily Brilliant. at a glance. That's and great. then... At the end, I will have a slide with all 15, white on black, another one with black on white, and we can discuss then, but for now, let's just walk through, let me walk through it, and then uh, we'll have a discussion at the end. And then when I get to the end, and I've, I've, I've walked through all 15, and then I, I have that slide up with all 15 of them at once, and they're like, wow, that's a lot of, that's a lot of really nice <laughs> marks. Usually the eyes light up a little, a little bit. I ask them, I'm like, you do not need to make a decision right now. I wouldn't even advise that. You should probably sleep on it. You should probably talk to, you know, the, you know, other people. But if you had to go with your gut right now, right. what are the best three marks? Right. Let's, Ooh, let's figure right. it out. And I try and make them make some decisions right off the bat yep. or if there's a room of like if when i'm presenting to like a city and i have like the fire chief and the police chief and the mayor and like all these people in the room and it's like nine people i i, I say i want each of you to write down the three that you would pick mm -hmm. and then once everybody's written it down so they aren't influenced by you know the mayor or whatever um let's go around the room and talk about the ones we like and why and i tally them up and then at the end i'm like if you had to pick right yeah. now this is the one that stands out, or these two. Dude, I mean, again, again, brilliant. So we, we follow a very similar for, format in the sense that we, yeah. our song and dance prior to that is a little tiny, tiny different. But yeah. ultimately, we're like, listen, you need to focus on your initial gut reaction. You know what the project was about. You know mm -hmm. what, what, what the target is, what resonated with what we said, right? And, and then we discuss, we, we tell them not to overthink it, because God, dude, People overthink everything. So it's human nature yeah, they, to overthink things to death. By the time they analyze it to death, you end up with a logo that, dude, mm. I don't even want to talk about some of the stuff like the original Apple logo. That's mm. what you end up with when people talk it to death. Are you talking about like the hand drawn one or the rainbow one? No, the, the hand drawn, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, hand drawn yeah. one. Yeah. You know, underneath the apple yeah, with yeah, Isaac yeah. Newton. Newton yeah. That's yeah, what yeah, you yeah, end yeah. up with if yeah. people talk it through and they overthink it, like they because yeah. they won't include everything. It's it's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny too. Though the, I just did a, a logo project for a church named Landmark. Yeah. And they were doing a name change. They, they switched to Landmark from from another name, and it's a long story. And I, it, it's, it's it's really sad, actually. Like why? The, doesn't matter. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I did this whole process, and I presented the brand marks. Yada yada. We there were a whole room full of all the elders and everything like that, and we tallied them up, and they had the ones they liked. And there was one mark that only one person was like, "That one's pretty cool," and they had a little one tally next to it, right? And then they all went home. And they all talked to their wives and showed their wives. And all their wives were like, what's wrong with you? Why didn't you pick that one? It's exactly what you need. It's exactly what you asked for. It's perfect. And the one that only had one vote or whatever, that's the one they went with. All, all their wives said. <laughs> it was so funny. And it was the best mark. I was glad it came back to that. Is that the one with better the, than the ones is that Is that the one did. with the boxes and the, and the cross in the... The... Yeah, it's like it's like a city on a hill, so it looks like it's kind of like a ah, negative yes. space hill with these, you know, skyscrapers coming up yes. and there's negative space cross. Very nice. It's, it's like a nice simple mark. It's I, great. I like yeah, it. yeah. It's so let me cool. ask you something then. So yeah. when designing, okay, obviously you've designed for big business, and yeah. and you've designed a lot of really personal, really passion, really faith, um, you know, and you driven yeah. uh, differences. Are there any? Yeah, for sure. In the last like seven years since since i've gone solo i have had the opportunity to brand stuff that would like make your jaw drop like some of the coolest brands on the planet like so many of them wow. and Envious. every single time something happens oh. it's like the ceo leaves at the last oh. second yeah. in-house the in-house like they, it goes all the way up through all the tiers and then like some in-house person is like yeah i want to do it myself <laughs> or whatever there's, there's, it's always so something true. And yeah. none of it, none of it ever happens. It drives yeah. me crazy. Yeah. It's like, it's like me, like any one of them would 
like like you, you you know my work and stuff like that yeah. but it would be like in like brand new would post about it and it would be like all people talk about for a week if i yeah. any of these brands if anybody redesigned them because they're just like big ones you know yep and and that happens i i, I can't mention any of the names i have all oh, ideas on all of them but it's happened to me like nine times maybe yeah. it's crazy and every time i get my hopes up i'm like oh Maria, it's, this is it this yeah. is it we're taking off they're like this is gonna be it for our company i'm so excited and she's like relax alan uh, just, uh, yeah, it yeah, never yeah. works out and it never does, <laughs> it never does. <laughs> but what i so those projects the great thing about them is they pay super well right yeah and you're getting paid for the process and i make some great work and i have a lot of fun making the work and and it's a great process and one of these days, one of them will go through, and that'll be great. I, I've, I've, I've done like I have done some big brand stuff. I've done stuff for Amazon. I've done stuff for um, Walmart. I've done stuff for I, I don't know. I, I've done stuff for a lot of big brands, yeah. but it's not like I did the Walmart logo or I did the right. Amazon logo or what you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, I, I've had a lot of opportunities and and uh, like that and and so yeah, like that that's freaking heart wrenching every time that happens. Yeah. Although I'm getting used to it. <laughs> but the great thing is if if you keep the balance of i, I guess for me where, where I'm, i have different things coming in if i did all those type of projects and nothing ever got produced and i had nothing to show for like all my time i've invested you know i'd be feeding the kids we'd be living well i'd hell i'd probably be making more money than i make you know you, the, some big brands are gonna pay a lot better than a church right mm -hmm. uh, but that said you know, having the balance of some mid-sized brands, some small ones, you know, not only uh, with those are, it, you have a little more control. You're able to actually sit down and talk to the CEO or the president and, and you're able you to- You mean really in the church versus head. the, the, the yeah, large companies? Yeah, 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 because that's not gonna happen if you're, I can't uh, name any of the brands, it's driving no, crazy. The Walmart, um, tar Target, whoever, whatever. big companies, yeah. yeah. Whatever, it's, but it's, it's it's not those. It's yeah. not those. Okay. Um. But uh, the, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is having that mix of the small ones and the big ones and the medium ones, it makes sure that it, like I'm always kicking out work because right now within this world of social media and and running agencies, it's not the same as the old RFP days, and maybe it is for like big ad ad, ad agencies and stuff yeah. like that, but. For little guys like me, man, my work, most of my stuff's coming. I, I could ask to do RFPs every so often. I'm like, that's going to take me forever, and it's just me. So I'm like, I, I can't kill two weeks and get paid nothing. That's, yeah. that's not worth it. Yeah, 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 yeah. agreed. And most of my work is just like, hey, this person told me about your work. You know, let's let's go. Or I, I found your work on Instagram. Let's mm -hmm. go. Let's let's make this thing. I need a logo. Yeah. And I like yours the best. I researched a bunch of people and you make cool badges and I like cool badges, you know, whatever, whatever yeah. the story is. <laughs> but um, the, the nice thing is the smaller brands or the medium sized brands do trust me more. And I do get to talk to a greater, like higher decision making level. And I get to make some really cool work. Yeah. And I think you need to balance that. Um, at least for me, I, I like producing work, not just, not just, you know, spinning my wheels. Let, let me just go here. Okay. Let's talk about bad customers and bad experiences because God knows we all have them and everybody, when they're in that space, they feel mm. like they're the only one and, and they're doing something wrong. And have you ever had this kind of experience? Bad customers, bad experiences. You got anything to share? Yeah. So <laughs> I'm not going to get into any specific, uh, like I, I could, I could, I've had I've had three uh, really bad experiences oh, yeah. over the past seven, eight years of running my company. And I work with a lot of clients. And so I'm working with, I mean, this is like a, I don't know, two, one, two percent, three percent of the people. Of everything with. you've done. It's yeah. really That's important to me yeah. when, I, when I'm done at the end of the day that my client's happy, that they have a smile on their face. That they, they they look at it as like a friendship, yeah. you know. That I think the relationship is is very important. Agreed, one hundred percent. And, and it's Clients not just like, about mm -hmm. making a great piece, right? Yeah. You know, I, I want that relationship to be strong. But I've had certain people where it's like I had I had one client where they 
you know, just got, they, they got harder and harder to talk to. And then they like had gone behind my back and hired another designer and then oh. made some, made some other logo with like, after I'd worked with them and like done rounds and stuff like that. And then refused to pay like the, the final payment on it. Like, even though like the contract said they had Dude, to. when, when? That was brutal. At what point? At what, like early on freelancing after when? No, it was like last year. What? Last um, year? What? I had, I, I've had, I had a client where they were just like, wanted to fight every single time and and i was just like i always smile on my face like you know just trying to walk them through it and like lead them like you know you, yeah we, we talked about like crap. you know like sometimes the client wants to drive the car like yes. off the road into a ditch yeah, yeah. Really, yeah. i felt like i was on the <laughs> pulling steering wheel like, pulling so hard the whole time for months just trying yeah. to keep it on the road <laughs> and it was so challenging and then uh you know who they yeah. got? And then I had got somebody one fresh one. out of high school who just like <laughs> oh shut up and just do whatever they <laughs> wanted to do and be like, yeah, I was right from the start. Look at this. Yeah. And I had one where it's like I had done amazing work, put together like this giant brand, like logo family, not just like, oh, here's the brand mark, here's the horizontal, like a whole family of brands that need to live together that beautiful systems mm. options worked on it for three months and like made beautiful work and beautiful options like hundreds and hundreds of, of marks for them to look through and like systems all organized right mm. and I, I remember showing to one of my buddies my buddy nick and he's like man this is like some of the best work you've ever done this is so oh good my God. and i present it i present it to the client and he's just like straight faced he apparently they're like they, they had just gone through like some hard stuff at home or something like that and he was just like like he was just like pissed and then after after that he like called me up and he was just like he wanted to talk with me and then like i think he was like almost in tears and he was just like i hate everything you made and it's just like oh. it's just so brutal oh hearing God, that. Just like like three months of work and they're just like i don't even want to pay for it like this is just oh. trash i'm so sad like, Dude. <laughs> Damn! So Holy cow! That's I don't even so know what I, to say I, about that. I've had these moments like that, and, and that's that's it's rare. Like I said, that's like one two percent of the time. But it, we go through this stuff, yes, you know, like do. as designers, you know, and, and you can't when things are subjective. You can't control everything, and you can all you can do is the best work that you can do. Absolutely. And, you know, usually. I, I, one of the things you guys had said is like, you know, what did you learn from it, or like, what what, like, how can you avoid this in the yeah. future? Like, what what can come of this, yeah. right? And um, <laughs> I think one thing is like, I've gotten better over the years of feeling out like when I have those initial calls. Interesting. When I'm the feeling, onboarding like, you, sometimes calls. You can tell you're like, this person's crazy. Oh, I'm not. I'm yeah, not gonna yeah, work yeah, with this yeah, person. Yeah, or yeah, <laughs> yeah, these, yeah. They're like, oh, I already have the idea. It's right here. There, there's like <laughs> oh. all these red flags, like things you're supposed to look for. Oh, I have found that the more a client will negotiate and try nickel and dime you up front mm. about the overall payment, yep. the worse they'll be to work with. Wow. The, the, the less you do the work for, the cheaper it becomes, the more of a nightmare it will be. I like it, if they, they like force you into doing it for very little, they are gonna be, it usually means it's coming out of their pocket. Yep. It's really personal to them. It's not a company you're hiring, it, you're, you're being hired by a person. Yep. And then they, they take it so personal and it's such a nightmare. It's like deep pockets, but <laughs> short arms. And they're like a freaking Tyrannosaurus Rex. I can't right. reach down there. Yeah. So I guess the advice is when at all possible, yeah. even though you're trying to have personal relationships, try and work with companies that are spending their marketing budget mm. versus people that are spending like out of pocket for their startup and that they have their own personal I and, and, and you're gonna work as, as the logo designer I'm gonna work with a lot of startups I'm gonna work with a lot of people yeah, yeah, with their yeah. pain out of pocket and that's gonna happen but you just those people specifically you really got to feel them out yeah. about how they're gonna be you know how they negotiate about like the, the overall price um what they're like to talk to try and get to know them a little bit and 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 feel them out beforehand before you end up in like a two or three month relationship yeah. that's really hard oh, that's so. so true wow Caesar doesn't just happen to us yeah. it happens to yeah. people like him yeah that's sad but <laughs> okay wait that was number two is there a third one there uh, a third thing that I learned from them yeah um, I don't know I, I guess something that I've learned in my career is to try and take 
all feedback and don't look at it as like that they're trying to ruin it. Like look look for the the true meat like of, of what's there and use it as an opportunity to make the work better. I think a, a lot of uh, the quality in the work that I create comes from like kind of never giving up, taking feedback and like maybe not doing exactly what they're asking to do, but just coming back with like here's. I understood what the problem was and here's the actual solution for yeah. it. And, 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 and I took what, what I thought was great. And I think it's even better now Yeah, because a lot of the times they, it, feedback, they, they are identifying an issue or a problem. And sometimes it's frustrating with how they, they tell you to, to solve it, you know, like make the logo bigger or whatever. <laughs> but usually there's, you know, if that means that it is a little bit off branded and then there is a way to mm-hmm. add more, uh, brand identity DNA into the thing, you know, like you're going to end up with a stronger piece in the end. So I guess, uh, you know, when you are getting negative feedback and it is hard and you're like really frustrated, try and don't like write back right away and, and just sleep on it. Think about it. Think about the problem. Think about how you can make it better and look at it as like, Hey, I got an opportunity to take this even up at like an, another level, mm. you know, like how can good I make call. this good so call. it's so darn good that it's bulletproof yeah. that, that even, even the hater yeah. out there cool. can't find anything Damn. to complain about. Yeah. Yeah. When customers do give that kind of feedback, do you feel like you're, you're navigating that feedback just for your own personal ego's sake or for, or, or, or for the job, the best job moving forward or a little bit of both? I think my job is to make the the best end product. Mm. And so it's really important for me to, to do that for my clients, even if they're trying to drive the car off the road. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Cool. I, and because I, I want to be successful, but in terms of like, especially my ego or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, man, I got four kids. I've been pooped on. So many times. <laughs> I've, I've had just like, I've been like knee deep in knee deep in like some messed up situations with, with those boys. Let me tell you, you should see my grocery bills. Oh, we all year, man. I'm going to have to like get a second job. I'm going to be like, working I'm going to be like the, the cashier on top of I love it. Um, it's so true. <laughs> it's so true. But it's, full it's so expensive, bags. man. Yeah. No, no, no. Agreed. Right. Okay. So here's another question in line with this. Um, on the yeah. flip side, okay, yeah. you you have worked with both in both small studios and mm-hmm. you've worked with big companies. Okay. And granted, BBDO, yeah. you're just probably a small, small, small cog in a, in a giant, you know, like uh, endless sea yeah. of cogs. But small studios versus a targetish or something that, you know, a little larger – which do you feel you got the most experience from value from you preferred if you had to recommend to somebody? Okay. So I'll answer this the same way when people are like, how did you uh, go solo? How did you start on your own? Like, what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the, um, how how did you get there? Mm. And I took like the slowest approach (laughs) possible. I I think you tried everything, man. That's why your bicycle logo was so good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I wanted to, um, uh, gosh, I wanted to have a substantial portfolio of big client work that would help me get more work. I wanted to also build up a freelance clientele, like that I, I knew I'd get continual work. So I'm not going to like, I have a family and stuff, you know, I yeah, can't just yeah. be like, well, <laughs> hopefully it works out. I'm starting <laughs> my own thing. Um, I, I very much was like, okay, I, I've got, I've got the portfolio set up how I want it. I, and the other thing that was really important was uh, figuring out how to run the type of agency that I wanted to run. Mm-hmm. And I learned so much at every single place I worked. No matter what they are, no, even the places where people be like, oh, you work there or whatever. I, I don't care. I learned a lot at every single shop and from yeah. all the people I worked with there, whether it was learning uh, something that was helpful in the future or maybe something helpful not to do um, that, <laughs> that was in there, <laughs> too. But like, I, you know, I even like how, how to sell work, how, how to write a contract the right way, uh, how to work with writers. And I remember the first time that uh, when, when I was doing advertising. It's design style. I, I, I working with a writer at, like when I worked at an industrial, they would have like freelance writers and I would basically design a whole my like, print campaign and I'd like I put Laura Mips in there and be like, Okay, fill it out, right? Mm. And it's <laughs> they would just and then the freelancer Never would just know. crank out some headlines and boom and it's all done. Or a BBDO, we'd I, I would be like in a room with the door closed 
with a writer for like a week, right. Sharpies and a stack of uh, eight and a half by 11 white pages. And yeah. we would fill the walls wow. yeah. and we would work together and we'd both be coming up with ideas and trying to help the other person's idea yeah. get stronger. It wasn't like one person was leading specifically. It was definitely like a mesh working together. So I really learned how to work with writers well. Uh, at that point, and that's e even helped me now. Like when, when I collaborate with my wife, she's a great writer. I was going to say, yeah, that's, that, that's your roles. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it, not as she has, because she's homeschooling right now, she, that she'll do a, like some, like, uh, like, like when it's tax time, she'll help out then when it's time to do, like go through QuickBooks and do all the stuff that, that I don't want to do. She'll she takes care of that and dude she like, keeps you creative that's that's like that's lets a me solid foundation that makes that, you create i'm still like stuff. when i have to get in the like when i'm working with walmart or something like that and i have to do two days of paperwork i'm doing that still so i mean there's it's a balance you yeah. know i'm still i'm still invoicing and i'm still you know telling clients they be like hey you haven't paid for this invoice that's six weeks <laughs> overdue hey. seriously <laughs> 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 Yeah, so it's, we we share responsibilities, but when she has done a lot of writing and she and she's she is an excellent writer. She's done a lot of naming. She's really good at naming brand names and stuff like that. Which from a you know, brand identity studio, it's nice to have that in house. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so are you are, are you that. even doing anything outside of the brands, brand work, logo marks, and everything, or are you primarily now focused in on brands and brand marks? That's primarily what i'm doing i mean i Dude, i'll amazing. still like get brought onto like an annual report covers you know like a i don't know there's little things here and there you mm -hmm. know where uh, it's something else you know it's uh but usually it starts with a logo usually it's a logo and then it flushes up so um, we we niched out into an industry space right like z factor niched out into you know um you know b2b technology companies you know mm -hmm. and primarily even in iot and broadband spaces um yeah. but we we still like position ourselves as generalists like in the mm -hmm. sense of we can help you from print and print campaigns all the mm -hmm. way to you know logo marks and everything else you've yeah. gone the completely flip side and you have focused in on brand marks which man i'm so envious of good for you for doing that um are there disadvantages of going that i mean that's a different kind of niche than i usually right. profess to people well i i did a lot more of that when i'd work at places you know i yeah. obviously i did print and and commercials and stuff like that when i worked in advertising uh when i worked at uh agencies i would do a mix of stuff usually if it wasn't brand identity focused at a little at a little brand shop like that it was something mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like a catalogs and stuff like that i did, I did a bunch of boat catalogs and trailer <laughs> catalogs and stuff like to that. me that sounds like exciting but anyway hey whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and then uh uh at target it was so much in store you know i did a lot of in-store stuff and events event branding and i didn't do a, i didn't do a ton of logos you know i, I did i did a few key ones when i worked at target uh, I, I worked on the cartwheel logo and the threshold logo, which they just redid like this week. Oh, yeah, wow. new one up. Yeah, because it wasn't a logo the last. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> they just didn't know what they were thinking. Okay, don't worry about it. New CMO, new direction. That's yeah. Like... Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, it's worked well for you. I, it, it, I, I've done a mix of stuff, up, and, and a lot of people know that I can do a huge mix of, of stuff. But because I, I think it's because I'm so focused and this is what I do and this is what I share. Yeah. Uh, it, it's people think of logos are like, oh, what about that one guy? That guy does all the logos. You know, <laughs> it, it's easy. Just like when you're like, oh, I need a letter, a, a lettering artist. Immediately your head goes, you know, like, of course, you know, Simon Walker, Jessica Hish. It's like it's like you have your like three or four people that they like immediately pop into your head yeah. and, you know, friends of type and stuff like that. And but you're like, oh, they're, they're probably way too expensive. <laughs> like, where are some kids doing yes, it, right? You would or whatever. Um, but, it, 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 you know, it is, sometimes you have to have those budgets and things like that. Uh, specializing and niching, it makes it so you do come top of mind. Because if you are a jack of all trades and you're like, hey, man, I do everything, you're not going to get hired for anything. Right. Uh, the, the, and that's what I tried to do from the beginning. Be like, oh, I can do it all. You know, I can do 
I can do the ad, I can do the commercial, I can do the website, I can do the this, I can do the that, I can do all your things, right? Mm -hmm. And because of that, I thought the work was kind of watered down and I wasn't that great at any specific thing. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I got better at different things, but I just really like making logos. So, oh, that's... dude, it shows. Yeah. It shows. Totally. Never mind. Totally. You own that shit. Yeah, you do. Okay, yeah. so with that being said, here's some scary yeah. questions. Okay. Yeah. So, what's the future look like for not only you, mm -hmm. but design in general? Um, There's some pretty scary stuff out there. I'm sure a lot of people are, 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 you know, and again, we've we've embraced a lot of the stuff that's out there, but I mean, it's going past what we are seeing right now in the space. Right. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I think in general, designers, other than like when computers showed up and changed things from like doing things by hand to by computers, even when that happened, the overall craft of what we do really didn't change. Overall, slowly aesthetic shift over time and as trends change. Yeah. But usually you can see the trends and you can adapt when you need to. But and, and, and there's certain things that are a little bit more timeless. The nice thing about brand identity and logo work specifically is a logo that was really good, you know, in the 1960s mm -hmm. is like the CVSI. They're still using that. Fuck it's yeah, awesome. They are, man. It's yes, good. They are. The, the Target Bullseye, yeah. when was that was done, like it was like 70s or 60s. Yeah. That, Brilliant. The, when it got, yeah, and it's it's there's gonna be no reason to ever update that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they updated the type a couple of years ago, but they didn't need to update the bullseye because it's it's perfect. It's perfect, yeah. you know. Yeah. You have the 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 two width circle, and then yeah. a one width negative space, and a one width ring, and it's like the math is perfect. It's yeah. simple. It's easy to use. Beautiful. Balance. You can flip it around, yeah. spin it, whatever, and it's always the same. Yeah, yeah there's certain marks that it, it, it's. It hasn't changed in how many years, you know? It's, it's been, it's been sixty years, and and that CBSI logo is is still being used and still great. And there's not going to be updated unless somebody's dumb. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and so, Idiot. in terms of in UCMO. terms of yeah. in terms of my job and and how it's going to change and adjust, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think they're going to come up with some AI that can make spit out. Logos that are equal parts, uh, simple, unique, and um, memorable. Yeah. I don't think Agreed. that's ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. They might be able to spit out like some illustrations that are just like gobbledygook of a whole six persons people's style all mixed together. Mm -hmm. You know that's fine. Go go AI, but and they might look kind of cool. But they're not going to make simple logos that way. Mm -hmm. And and even if they did, are they going to be perfect for that brand? You know, yeah. is it going to make sense? And are they going to be unique? You know, two people put the same thing in the algorithm and it spits out the same logo for two people on a different side of the globe, you know? Mm -hmm. Then they got the same logo, they ain't helping anybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, I, I'm not worried. I know AI is like such a big thing. Mm -hmm. I think the thing that is, as logo designers, we've got to stay away from is trends. There's, I don't know if it's as much of a big thing, but there was a huge trend. You saw Pentagram doing a lot where they have those, or the USA Today logo. Hey, we're putting us something different in this circle on every single spread, you know, a different <laughs> photo crop in it. Or it's like that Melbourne, that cool Melbourne logo that was had like the M yeah. uh, for the city of Melbourne that yes. had like different styles of M's. You know, it, those logos where it's never consistent, mm -hmm. I, I don't buy into that at all. I think that's just a logo design trend that's going to, you know, later on there and be like, you know what? Those weren't very memorable because it was never the same. It was never the <laughs> so same. Nobody remembers. Unless it's consistent and being inconsistent, but I don't think that makes go for a good brand identity. Yeah. It doesn't really make sense um, strategically. So I, I, yeah, in terms of logo design, I, I know like Bill Gartner and uh, the the what is it logo? Um, I, I, the what's the logo book that everybody submits to that has tons of logo? Logo Lounge, mm -hmm. Logo Lounge series that Bill Gardner does. I know he always has like, here's logo trend alert and he has like certain things, but you look at them, usually, I, sometimes they're a trend, but a lot of times they're just like, yeah, they've been doing those same logos they for, like everybody they else. have those logos with stripes. Like, yeah, there's been a lot of logos with stripes. Right, you know what whatever. else technology is missing? The ability to present. And again, I don't think people actually put enough um, emphasis on the presentation, yeah. the importance of the presentation. I mean, again, I have won over jobs in the past yeah. Not because of the actual job itself, because sometimes it's like, I know this isn't the sexiest logo, but this is the right. best logo for what right. you guys want to achieve. 
it's the presentation side. And I don't think AI will ever be able to, you know, take care of that, like come up with not only the logo, but the story and put the, put together the whole brand story and then present that stuff. So I think that's, that's a huge factor that obviously you own, you embrace. And I mean, Mm -hmm. we, we always go on about the importance of, Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if that's ever going to happen. Yeah. Oh, for the record, Bill Gardner is amazing. Gardner (laughs) Design's amazing. Of course. Global knowledge is is a useful, helpful tool that I've used since I was right out of school and um the, all i was saying there is that the like the like the trends and stuff like that i i, I don't know if i buy into the, the, there are some things that are trendy but yeah. usually you can see them no pretty exactly easily. a mile away and trends they fade yeah. unfortunately so mm-hmm. yeah right. i think we're huge huge believers in that yes. um all right so with that being said are you touching anything um you know in your book about the future future proving yourself anything or i mean again i love your approach about yeah being authentic well, I, I, being legit being long term um yep i think my whole book is about making logos that are future proof that's kind of like that's the thesis of it yeah yeah, yeah. You know, future proof logos something that's gonna hopefully be around when your grandkids are around or after you're dead, you know, it's going to live longer. Than you live. <laughs> More than anything, yeah. Right. Um, it's always sad when uh, you've worked on something and, and, and it lives like 10 years and then all of a sudden it gets replaced. And you're like, oh, man, even it, and then it, you know, it, it, you're like, wow, I didn't make it. And, and I, I, I think that the whole point of this is to avoid that happening so that, your work will be timeless, that it will stick around, that uh, uh, people will be talking about it for years to come, that it'll be, uh, you know, something that helps evolve the great conversation and design um, and and keep pushing things forward. Yeah, so, absolutely. Well, the process yeah. of the book, I mean, again, I think everybody, um, oh, again, our generation, everybody fantasizes about yeah. writing a book because it's just so cool. It, it, it makes it legit. What What's that like compared to like doing logos? Because you're flipping and flopping on a daily basis. Yeah. Um, I, I If you would have told like 15-year-old Alan, <laughs> you're like, hey, Alan, you got to write a 200-page book. I would have cried. I would have been like, no, uh, <laughs> I want to do it. <laughs> um, we hate books. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I actually, I read a lot now. And, you know, and I love to read and I read to my kids all the time. And I'm, I'm way into books, but... I don't know if younger me, younger would have, would have ever wanted this? to read that much. Or, I, I, it would have been a real challenge. Let's put it that way. <laughs> what makes this process, uh, I don't want to say easy because it's really hard writing a book. Uh, it's cool. a lot. But um, that's cool. Actually. What makes it uh, easier is that I'm writing about what I know. This is like yeah. basically, basically everything in this book. Once I had the, the book map laid out, like what's, I had kind of mapped out like what's going to be on each spread, just mm-hmm. just like a, a word document, not not even pictures, but like this spread's going to be about this, this one, this, this one, this three spreads on this, and and once I had the book map done, um, I, I looked at them like oh, I know all that. That's it's going to be easy, cool. you know. I, I know every single thing in here. I just actually have to sit and create the darn thing and write it, and so it is weird to sit for like two or three hours and do nothing but write from a person who usually it's just visually creating yeah, um, yeah. it's a different part of my brain uh and i i mean the first thing you got to do with any book is just like get it all out and then and then you craft it and, and really refine it so I, I don't know it's it's been a a challenging but rewarding process and uh yeah I, I'll, I'll be very thankful when it's all done <laughs> yeah. and, it's, and it's not that it's going to be bad or anything it's just that it's it's been a lot on top of running a company yeah. and, and raising four boys yeah. and uh, i'll once it, because i'm be wrapping it up near the end of april right when summer's starting to really kick in in minnesota and uh it's it's gonna be a warm and the snow will be finally gone finally like this summer is gonna be like i i am fantasizing about like riding my bike and getting out there going on hikes and stuff with my family man i'm just like mm, yeah it's so excited <laughs> yeah it's awesome dude all right yeah. you know what it is like almost approaching crazy ass time i've taken yeah. way too much i can hear your kids in the background yeah but we are gonna yeah. finish 
in our traditional style. Yes. All right. Because again, I, I honestly, we might talk again in the future because I, I feel like I, I can keep talking to you forever, which is probably, and maybe this should happen off camera instead, <laughs> just because again, no. it's just so real right now. But um, again, to be respectful of your time and everybody else's, yes. we're going to finish this in our, um, we have a 120 second, two minute speed round, round, speed round of questions. <laughs> Do you have music that goes in the back? You see that? Oh, you see that? Look at that. I got all these questions. And now, are you nervous? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh look, look at this guy. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Put, put, put the light on. Put the timer on. He beats time business. Round. We're going to ask you a whole bunch of questions. And you got to answer honestly. Okay? All right. And Written. um, and again, some of them are high level. Some of them are pretty hard. I don't know. But again, see what you can do in two minutes. Okay. Are you ready, Alan? Let's go. All right. All right, ready? Here we go. And Three, two, one. Start. All right. Mac or PC? Mac. Favorite music? Oh, uh, hip hop. Ooh. Ooh. Favorite color? Orange. All day. Oh, favorite All cartoon? Day. Favorite cartoon? Favorite cartoon? Oh, um, Futurama. Oh. oh. Favorite collectible? Uh, video games. <laughs> okay, cool. Favorite superhero? Uh, I, Ant Man. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I, although the, the new one's supposed to be awful, I didn't even see it. <laughs> I, I, I thought the first the scene one was will funny. judge you no after we watch that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Marty McFly? Oh, from Back to the Future. Yes. Man. What is Quark Express? <laughs> Oh man, I, I I was really good at Quark, and then they're like, "You have to use InDesign." I was like, "Ah, I've learned new quick keys." Um, yeah, it's it's like InDesign, but old. Okay, okay, okay. Even worse, what was before Quark Express? Quark Express was there when I first started. I'm oh. I'm not that old. Oh, oh boys. 1980. Oh, Fair geez. enough. All right, coffee or tea? I like coffee. Puppies or kittens? I've only had cats, but I really want a dog. Oh. Atta boy. Pirates or ninjas? <laughs> ninjas all day. <laughs> Favorite artist ever? Like our, our, our art or like musical artists? Us. Art. Graphic you? Design. Oh. Yeah. Um, Paul Rand. Atta oh, boy. Yes. This guy. I love all this right. guy. Who is better? Walmart or Target? <laughs> I, I can't answer that. That was a trap. That was a trap. I, 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 I can't answer that. Fair enough. Okay, then fair enough. <laughs> serif or non-serif? Um, uh, non-serif. Okay, 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 yeah. okay. Favorite font right now? The the most recent one that I found is pretty awesome is Poppins. It's free. Oh, and that's Poppins. Awesome sans serif. Dude. Yes. FYI, that's the angry designer font. Yep. Just saying. That's right. Just saying. Okay. That's a good font. It, it is. is pretty fun. It is. All right. Magazine or tablet? Oh, I am way into uh, my Kindle now. My wife got me into it. I, I was always nice. like, because I have walls of books. I love books. And uh, yeah. Yeah. I, so I'm, I'm, I love reading on Kindle because I can rock a babe to sleep in one hand and, and, and read the, the table with my thumb. <laughs> Yep. Smart. I never thought about nice. that angle. And, and he can't, he can't like knock it out of my hand. Or, or, or the pages on. Just don't, it and twist it. And dump it in I was just going to say, don't put it in the washing machine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. True or false. Newsprint mm. is dead. Newsprint. Um, I, I mean, I, the, the, we use a ton of newsprint in art school and there's art school still around. So I'm assuming they're using just doing gesture drawings and, right. and they need lots of newsprint. Okay. okay. I, but you mean like newspaper. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I, Oh. I, I miss circulars. I, 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 I they put circulars back into newspapers, oh, like on like Black cool. Friday. I know you guys don't have Black Friday up there, but Black Friday for us down here, man. Mm -hmm. And you get the Target ad on Thanksgiving, and the, all the you know like the Walmart ad mm -hmm. and the Best Buy ad, and you're all looking through. Yeah, we don't have oh, Black Friday, but we do have White Saturday, which is us reading all the news about all the people <laughs> that get trampled on Black Friday. So it's great. <laughs> love it. It's actually called Red Saturday, Red isn't Saturday, it? That's all the blood really, that yeah. spilled. I, mean, I love Boxing Day. It. Is it Boxing Day kind of like that? Yeah. Is it kind of Boxing like, Day. Yeah, that's yeah. kind of our thing. Yeah. No, but we're Canadian. I, we don't yeah. trample. We politely yeah. ask people to yeah. move out of the way while we share yeah. the crazy yeah, I, I did all the social media for Target 
all the like the whole Facebook page, all the posts yep. that uh, when when we went to Canada. Yep. So all the Canada themed stuff. So I know I love a that. lot about Canada, and the there, history of Canada, and all the holidays and all the you do. Yeah, there was a line on there is like it didn't work in Canada. The only thing that worked <laughs> was the social media, and you're it's absolutely so right. That's true. That was so it's good. So true. <laughs> All that stuff was good. I don't know why we didn't take the target. Like, I apologize. I, we we apologize. Get, we love the, it. The issue, the issue with that is they couldn't get the product on the shelves. And, and so, like, you'd be like empty yeah. stores. That, and people complained about it. I kind of felt right. I thought they just kept the extra white space to keep a designer. Which is why I appreciate it. But now we <laughs> yeah. know it's products it's on shelves. Product. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who would win in a fight? Chase. From Paw Patrol or Night Ninja from PJ Mask? I don't know either of those shows. I know, well, I know, I know of Paw Patrol. I don't, I've never even heard of PJ Mask. Oh, um, oh, what was the guy from Paw Patrol's name? What did you just say his name? Chase, was? the the leader from Chase? Paw Patrol. Now, if you would have been like, what's who would win in a fight? The Chase Manhattan logo <laughs> or the CBS Eye? I'd be like, oh, oh. Man. Or the NBC Peacock. Like, oh, NBC Peacock. Oh. NBC Peacock, probably. I don't know. I kind of like that one. Yeah, you know, those things are pretty violent. I, we got them in the park right here, right? I give you that much. <laughs> superpower of choice? Uh, superpower of choice? Oh, man. Time travel, maybe? That'd be oh, awesome. That's a great one. Great sure. one. Yeah, or Eternal no, no, no. or something? Best video game console ever. My favorite video game of all time, and I've been playing video games since I was really little. We had Atari 2600. Oh. I've, had, I've had all sorts of weird stuff. I've had like the Neo Geo, man. I had that. That thing was expensive. Oh, so random, I had man. Sega CD, all these crazy turbo graphics and stuff like that. My favorite video game of all time is uh, Zelda Breath of the Wild, and I cannot wait for the sequel to come out. Oh, next I month heard about the Nintendo that. Switch. And so, yeah, Time it's Switch. brand new, Time and it's, it's or not brand new, but the Switch is out right now, but it's time to come. It's so good. Yeah. Last but not least. Alan, mm-hmm. one thing that makes you angry. <laughs> one thing that makes me angry? Maybe this bent iPad, but I'm, 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 I'm really like, don't get angry about it. Don't get I'm angry. Not, do not get like, angry. He's, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> totally worth that. getting angry over. I love it. I like, bend it back in another position. <laughs> oh, my God. That's um, amazing. Well, no, the, the things that make me angry... Um, I, I wish I had I, I, people stealing um, your logos. When no, <laughs> no. Okay. Um, when things just start falling apart and you can't control it, oh. when you lose control and you're just like, interesting. It's like it feels like life's falling apart. Like if you have like you know multiple things happen that are out of your control, like in like a week or something. That's the mm. worst. Like yeah. you know somebody's getting sick or you know, somebody else is going to the hospital and this and that, and then you're just like, oh dude. Like all, all you can do is just like you know crawl close your eyes and say a prayer and just get through oh, it yeah. oh, <laughs> it's dude. better man I can play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did i mean again alan i i we can keep this conversation going forever but i again you are freaking awesome you yes. are everything i up oh you should have kept that bad boy on that's okay <laughs> But you should have, like, like, honestly, I, honestly, I can keep talking to you forever, but to be respectful to you, your life, your kids, your wife, I mean, honestly, for now, yeah. for our very first ever conversation, I think this is good. I mean, there's no question that um, you've answered everything, and then some of your human, dude, uh, again, you've lived up to everything. I put you on a pedestal, and you've, like, legitimately, <laughs> like, been like, yeah, that's exactly what I thought you were going to be like. You weren't, like, yeah. a pretentious, yeah. you know, designer who's okay. like, no, 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 I rock. You suck. You yeah. are awesome. You're human. Thank you for this conversation, yes. dude, honestly. Oh, man. You, you know, I, I remember hearing somebody say once, they were like, uh, every designer, every artist, every every musical, you know, artist, every every actor, they all started from nothing. You know, they just yeah, started just like some kid was like, hey, I like drawing or I like this or I like that. And for me, it started with, I, I just like to draw yeah. a lot. And, and I yeah. just wanted to do, I wanted to, I remember in high school, you know, filling out one of those things where you figure out what you're going to do for a living. Yeah. You know, you fill out a questionnaire and I was like, I'm like, I just want to make art. And, yes. I, and I remember just trying to answer yes. every question That's in a so way that would lead me to an answer that said something to do with art. Because I did not want to sit in an office building, yeah. you know, yeah. looking at Excel sheets for the rest mm, of my life. Exactly. Or, or for that matter, gosh, I've done like roofing. I've done siding, oh. all sorts of manual labor yeah. stuff, man. I've, I've I've done some hard things that I don't ever want to do again. It just makes and you love design more, doesn't holy it? Holy cow! That's right, doing that. That stuff. was yeah, one man. of the reasons yeah. why we said design is amazing. Yeah, it's like yes, yeah. yes, and uh, like, yeah, to find something 
Yeah, I love him. And it's, it's it's a good thing. That's awesome. and, and you know, I think that's that's the secret. So yeah, if 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 you're a kid out there and, and you're 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 you know just graduating and you're listening to this and you're like you're like man this guy look at wow he's doing all these big logos and whatever else and he's writing a book like that's i'll never be able to accomplish that that's not true yeah. you can you can do whatever you want oh, to do you just God. get so set your true. goals go for it and and just try to perfect your craft and and learn what you can from who you can learn it from and and you know just push really hard i guess yeah. oh, you know? put in the don't work. kill yourself in the process put in the work <laughs> don't be scared to put in the work yeah. honestly yeah. and honestly i can't not that i hope this doesn't sound bad but i can't wait for your book to come out yes i was Ooh, so man. happy we were so happy it was just like dude look look who's coming up with the book this is amazing honestly i'm so happy for you i'm so proud of you on it and i can't wait for it to come out i can't wait yeah. for it to arrive here at Z factor one of these days i may have to get it signed but that's another story we'll talk about that after okay come I mean, down by, not that somebody far. Does, come down so for a viking find somebody like a lecture series up there so i can come up there and talk yes and, dude you know, and then you gotta I'll, hang I'll out you, you gotta hang I'll out bring you posters I'll, I'll i'll make it worth your while yes <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you very Amen. much from everybody. Yeah. Hey, thanks for having me on. Thanks for taking the time. Two hours out of your day. That's that's a big. That's a big. Especially when and you're running you. eight, and you've got you. family and stuff. I, I I really appreciate. It. Well, I'm I'm. You're helping me sell a book, and I I'm not helping you do a darn oh, thing. No, no, don't you're say that. Don't say that. But you're not working on some no, cool client are. projects and hanging out with your family. <laughs> Dude, you rock. Yeah, All right. With that being said. Yep. My name's Massimo. No, and my name's Sean. Hey, Alan Peters. Buy my stay, book. Stay creative. And stay angry. And buy his book. Buy that book. Thank you. Peace. <laughs>
with you know guns blazing and like like sit down give me your money where's the oh, money no. you know, we just have like credit cards and stuff like that you know we didn't have like it's not like you're like oh here's where we keep the safe with all the yeah. money like freaking scrooge mcduck or something <laughs> um you know and and so uh maria calls inside to the there's a, one guy is still inside one, one of uh, the other couple the the man's inside getting some tacos or something like that <laughs> <laughs> and, and she's like ben call the police and he comes up to the window, he's like, what, 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 what? And they, like, put the gun right to his head, and they're like, you got any money? And pulls his pocket, they're like, you got yeah, anything? Yeah. And then they're, they're pissed at my wife at that point. It's her birthday. And she's, uh, like, probably pregnant. Yeah. yeah. And they put a gun to her head. Oh, shit. And they, and, and, the, the, couple months before this she got robbed out back of our apartment we had oh, lived in actually dude, it's probably like six yeah. months before this okay, and okay. and i wasn't there and i was on my way from, from work and she had been on the phone with her mom and she's like alan and the, her mom called me and was like alan you have to get there something's going on and i got there late and nothing it like she got robbed and she was like really like shaky about it and it was robbed at gunpoint out back of our apartment we immediately moved in with my parents yeah. saved up and bought this house yeah. that we had not not this one but the yeah. one we were living in yeah. at the time and so like i was already like shit man i wasn't there for that and here i am and and it, it's your birthday and then oh. fucking gunderhead and i'm like i need to man the fuck up and and handle this situation yeah. and so the guy closest to me i and i was working out a lot, a lot of the time i was in a lot better shape than not that i'm in bad shape but i was i was running a lot i was uh i could bench 300 pounds at the time i was, I was Damn, dude. Yeah, was good right. holding my holding my own man yeah dude, and benches just just yeah, my dude, dude right in front of me and he he went flying back like like literally like like six feet back and I jumped up and it ran over to like just just I I, I adrenaline took over I was yeah, acting yeah, yeah. stupid I was acting really stupid yeah. and the guy with the gun turned and shot, shot me right in the ribs and the bullet went through my body this way and like right in my flank right here it's still in there I can feel it um what it you can through. still feel the bullet yeah because because they when it went through two major arteries, uh, my liver, gallbladder, gosh, what else? I don't know. The, the two two intestines, both intestines. And so they were able, they had to basically cut me open, staple me up, yeah. get me back together and alive again. And it wasn't like, let's go play Where's Waldo and find the bullet. Uh, it was more like, let's make sure this guy stops bleeding because he's already lost half the blood in his body. And so, so this... The, the one guy shoots me and I'm wearing this like tight fitting shirt, like a, you know, like a, like a, just a t-shirt yeah, that yeah, fits a little yeah. tighter. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Not, not, not like, not like some like workout under armor thing. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, like, yeah. just like a t-shirt, like, like a V-neck something or other. And because it's a little bit stretchy material, the bullet went in and opened up and then reclosed again, like the, the shirt did. So the, I looked down and there was like, I was like, I saw that. I heard that looked down, but I'm like, I see, there's not like blood spurting out of me. Like I doesn't look like anything happened. And I turn at the guy with the gun and I charge him like a fucking rhinoceros. Jeez. And I'm like, 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 get the fuck out of my yard. Like I was, I was, I was losing it, man. And I chased these guys for like a half a block. They freaked out. Like, oh my just, like, God, dude. And like, get out of my yard. <laughs> like, like crazy old man. Chase them for about half a block. And then, then all of a sudden I'm like realizing I'm, I'm dying. Like I'm bleeding to death. And, and I'm getting dizzy. I'm just like, oh, holy stumbled. shit. They're gone. I stumble back in the yard. Pass out. Um, not pass out, but like, like fall to the ground. And then the, the, I, I wish what I was saying was like, I was like, oh, I was having this like, you know, intimate moment with my wife. Or anything. I was screaming like, fuck, yeah. it hurts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 no, journalist. yeah I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's reality. Yeah. Yes, lots Dude, of loud swearing. Crazy. Yeah, I'm real, I'm real, like, but my wife. God bless her soul, man. She was like, she was like, you know, they, like, they, like they teach you in school that like, if you're in a bad situation, you need to like point to be like, you do this, you do that, yep. you do that. And you handle the situation yeah. there or else everybody just stands there like, yeah, all dumb and doesn't do anything. Yeah. Maria's like, Jennifer, you call an ambulance, yeah. you know, uh, Ben, you go get some towels. Yeah. I'm putting pressure on this wound. And she took care of it. And she got, she got them there. They were there so fast. And, um, I remember, like, the way when I was waiting for them to come, like, after all the extreme swearing, um, 
like laying there and I and, love the excuse yeah. to wearing. Yeah. yeah. At the very least. <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. Well, it, it hurts so bad, but like, you know, like it, it, like anything, you know, like anything intense like that, it they you tend to build up a not a tolerance, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. you're like it, it's it's like a consistent something, you know. It's it's like a cat that gets a foot stuck in a box, and they're like, "Well, I just gotta live life with a foot stuck in a box." Like they don't they don't think to like take their foot out of the box, yeah. and they just walk around with the foot in the box. <laughs> um, it, <laughs> it, I, I don't know. I'm in a break now. Bad example. But any, the, the, I, I, at that moment, I was like, "I'm dead. Yeah. Like this is it. I'm I'm gone. I'm not coming back from this." Like I felt like I was like I was like started to drift off and I'm like, this is, Jeez. this is the end. Yeah. And, and I, I seriously, like I felt the connection. I felt like, yep. I hear there you. was, and, 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 whether you guys are the religious guys or not, man, I, I felt like I, I seriously felt a connection and I was like, I'm leaving and, and this is it. And I made my peace with God and I, and I, and I, you know, said a prayer and, and I, and I basically, I, I was ready. I was yep. like, I don't, I, I don't know if you ever felt that in your life where yep, you're like, I have, this is it. Yep. I'm, I'm gone. Yep. This is, this is, I was at peace with dying. I've always been scared of it ever since I was then. Who isn't yeah. being scared of dying yeah. like, you know, a little bit, even as a kid, but I was like, all right, this is, I'm, <laughs> I'm not going to be in this world anymore. And, and the, the ambulance came and like long story short, I mean, they, they, I, they took me and there was a lot I could keep going. And no, going. I can imagine but, um, how, but it, I was opened up for two days while they stapled and sewed me back oh, together. Oh, dude. And, and my family was freaking out. And my, the, you know, people are on short fuses at the time. My dad, remember my, my father was like to Maria, he was, he was like, you're supposed to be taking care of him. You're not supposed to let this shit happen. Course, and she's, yeah, yeah. she's lo like crying and like, everybody's losing. crazy all, at that point. They're all melting and like having emotional bursts and everything like that. And then having a hard time. And I, and I'm, I'm like, all drugged out and like not even there for yeah. for days yeah. how does <laughs> okay like, so like a, so oddly how did aaron draplin know about this and how did I, this... I did a lot of public speaking afterwards and and in part of my public public speaking i, I would i tell my story i would talk about like all the, like the hard work you know like especially early on in my career and especially working at ad agency and how hard yeah. that was and the turning point in the talk was I would like, but it, like designers are not ready for that. And I would, I would testify and I would be like, be like, listen, you know, number one, why didn't they turn around and shoot me? Why didn't they already shot me once and tried to kill me? Why didn't they fire again? And the, the, the detectives never found a bullet. So that means the gun jam. So that's, that's, there's that, you know, uh, the, the doctor told me that if it would have hit a rib, it would have splintered and exploded inside me and it went between two ribs. Um, and I'd be dead. If I hadn't been running, like, you know, like six miles uh, a couple days a week, uh, that I would have bled to death because I lost half the blood in my body. It's like, like thing after thing after thing after thing. And then here's the thing. When I was in the hospital afterward, um, uh, we took the test and found out we were pregnant with Matthew, which was pretty damn awesome. That was like the first thing we did, like once I was off drugs and stuff like that. So it was, it was just like, it was like this special, really, it cemented, I, I felt like God's kept me here to be be here for my family and be here to be a dad for my kids. And, um, I try and look at it as a positive light because my, my career, my life changed after that. And I did take the job at target. And, and then I was able to start my own company after that. And, uh, I did have more kids and, and my family's grown and it, life's been, life was freaking rocky before that. And, and it got a lot better afterwards, but how does Aaron Draplin know? But it, it, so like in 2000, when I worked at target, um, I got asked to do, especially after I did the first target branding campaign and that like was in CA and it got, there was one point where I always wanted to be in communication arts. And the first time I was in it, I was featured. I had a one project in the ad annual and one project in the design annual in the same year, which I don't know anybody who's ever done. That was like, I was like, Fuck yes. <laughs> like, like it never, like it was such a big deal for me. And, and I, I, my name got out there and I got to do a lot. I went to like Creative South. I, I spoke at like over like six months. I spoke at like 10, 15 places. Enough so that like my boss was like, hey, Alan, when's the Alan Peter show going to end? Can you like come back and focus? And even my wife was like, you got to stop traveling. This is getting crazy. But one of the nice things about it is was I, every time I would, I would 
talk about design and there'd be a lot of designers there like not a lot of designers are our faith dudes you know are christian guys in the south maybe but especially not in the north not not in northern united states man it's like crickets and so uh, one of the things like they always talk about in church is like you know testifying you know sharing your story with people and stuff like that so uh it was it was ex- and a lot of the times people might do that but they do it like at church again with a bunch of it's like you're preaching to the choir you know they always say like that term. yeah it, you're literally doing that so it was my opportunity to like kind of surprise people a little bit and, and mention that and and every single time there'll be like multiple people that come up afterwards and be like alan man like that or like they'd email me like a couple weeks later be like man i started going to church again like that like really like that's awesome